Welcome to Wrestling With Heart, a podcast looking at pro wrestlers giving back to their community. Join me, Stanley Carr, as I interview wrestling's hottest names who use their platforms as entertainers to raise awareness and do community service. Hello and welcome to another edition of Wrestling With Heart. This is the show where we talk with professional wrestlers and professional wrestling personalities about their lives in and outside of the ring, as well as doing acts of charity work, community service, volunteering, and just spreading positivity. We're all about the positive vibes here on the show. And I've got a very special guest with me today. He is a independent professional wrestler based out of Florida from St. Louis, Missouri. I'm pleased to welcome the one and only Jaden Steele. Welcome, Jaden, to Wrestling With Heart. Yo, thanks for having me, man. Yes, pleasure's mine. So tell me about your upbringing and childhood. Where are you from? So I was born in Missouri, St. Louis. Uh, it was uh, definitely a different upbringing, probably from what you're going to hear on 99% of the people you have on here. I'm a second generation wrestler. My dad broke into the 80s. Randy Savage trained him. He got his start in Memphis with like, Lawler and the Jarrett's uh, got the big name of uh, Savage's boy because everywhere Savage went, he went. So throughout the years, you know, bumping and banging and going all the way up and down the roads. Uh, 91 hits, here I come a few years later. Now I'm a little toddler, man, and, and getting to see my dad at this point in time. He was taking me to these WWF locker rooms. Um Hell, he even took me to WCW at one point. And just having these larger-than-life figures that, like, you or me know, as far as seeing it on TV goes, mm -hmm. like, they were my babysitters, you know? Like, I had Sergeant Slaughter in the back just playing with me and, like, nicknamed me Jumpin' Jordan at one point. Uh, Mick Foley was another great one. Uh, I went to school with his son, Dewey, in uh, Gulf Breeze, Florida, actually, because that was the other half of them, was Missouri and Florida, so... But my dad moving all over the place. I had to move all over the place. I didn't get to stay in one school. Um, come down to Florida and did like half my schooling. Missouri was the other half. Got good friends with Dewey. Like that was back when uh, Mick Foley won the WWF championship. Mm -hmm. And he brought it to our high school cafeteria the next day. Um, it, it was pretty epic, man. I never really yeah. had a good. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, you basically grew up in the business. Yes, I did. Yeah. And all so cool. I mean, that was the when Foley won the belt, that was the around the time Shivani on Nitro was, was basically plugging what was happening on Raw. Right. That night. Okay. Wow. So was there a particular point where you knew you wanted to do this, or did your your dad just kind of say, Let's get you let's get you going? So my dad never really approached me with the whole, hey, son, I want you to be a wrestler. Um, like, I, I, have a, I have a younger sister, and she really didn't get into wrestling, period. Um, it was always, like, me sitting in front of the TV on the floor, my dad sitting in his, like, recliner and always watching, like, every single episode of, like, Raw or SmackDown or whatever it was at that point in time after, like, being a little kid, man, and being babysit by, like, all of these, like, guys that are now, like, Hall of Famers, mm -hmm. it never really clicks because you're so young. You're just like, okay, this is what I'm around. Taking this it all is. in. Yeah, and, like, it, it just becomes a normal life for me. And then I, I loved wrestling, but my heart was in motocross. Like, he bought me a motocross bike when I was, like, 10, 11, and I ended up, like, on my wall behind me right here. I, I got my amateur national qualifiers for Loretta Lynn, Ponca, and all that good stuff. Like, I was wow. really, really good. And uh, really wasn't until about 2012, 2013, till I uh, decided, you know, like, I really want to wrestle. I want to carry the, the family's legacy because my sister showed no interest in it. I always had a heart in wrestling, always was around it, always wanted to go to the venues, always wanted to see the shows. Always heard the crazy stories that I didn't remember as a little kid when he took me to these like locker rooms when I was being babysat because I only have like a like a handful of the memories of like when I was out there and actually being able to see like Hulk Hogan and like Slaughter and and some of them that are dead to this day that I don't really have very much like memory left because I guess I took too many bumps or chair shots to the head, but 
you know, like it all adds up and like, you know, it's a very humbling experience with it, but it wasn't until about 2012 or 2013 till I decided like, Hey, I need to figure this out. Like, I want to do this. Like, I love motocross. Like, you know, it's paying off at this time. I'm making money doing like, you know, pro money class or a class back in the days, what they called it. And then he was like, go get yourself a ring truck and trailer. I'll train you. And then I was like, all right, say enough, like say less. So, you know, a little bit more time comes down the road. Now we're looking at around the 2013 ish area and I get trained. He trains me every day, nonstop. I learned the business and I'm ready for my first match in two and a half months, which is easy, fast, crazy fast. Like the average for people is six months to a year. I learned it in two and a half months. And I thought there was something wrong with me because like hearing everybody else like, oh, six months or a year, da, 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 da. I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm only did two and a half and I'm ready. I was like, did I pick this up that quickly or is it something somebody's not telling me? So after my old man trains me, I seek more training. Um, it was Rocky Johnson in Steel, Missouri. Met him at a cell barn. Uh, good friends with my dad. So this old man like, you know, walks up to the cell barn. You know, he pulls up in his Escalade. Me and my old man are sitting out front. My old man's smoking a cigarette. And then when he pulls in, he's like, oh, look, it's the pimp of the cell barn. And, like, we're joking, you know what I mean? Like, you know, just ribbing it. And then, sure enough, Rocky gets out. And he goes, I think that's Rocky Johnson. And I'm like, no, it ain't. No, it ain't. You're lying. No, it ain't. And, and then he's like, yeah, that's Rocky Johnson. And I was like, oh, yeah, well, then go up there and say hi to your friend then if that's Rocky Johnson. And, like, at this point, I don't believe him. I'm just, I'm just being, you know, a brat. And sure enough, he walks up there. And next thing you know, I see Rocky, my old man, embracing a hug. And I'm like, I'll be damned if he's telling the truth. And then he walks up and he introduces me to Rocky for the first time. Rocky glances me with that like little cold stare, like up and down for a minute when they when he approaches him with the whole training and all that, lets him know like what he's done with me and all of this. And then here we go, about 30 minutes in a conversation and about forty five hundred dollars later. You know, I'm going to Rocky Johnson's farm or his ranch and I'm going into his barn and then here we go, like training and doing promos and, and everything else on top of that. So I never stopped training because I feel like in this business, you never learn enough and you will learn all the way until the day you get out or you die. So then I had Rocky Johnson and, and my dad, Tony Park. So I had them on my resume and then that's my first year mark. I jump in, I'm in Florida at this time, so I jump into APW, um, XW2000, um, SCW, and started, like, hopping into these, like, little indie promotions, and uh, off to the races from there. <laughs> yeah, definitely a rising star, and Rocky Johnson was just one of the most talented, talented professional wrestlers to come out of the territory days, really made a name for himself in the early stages of the WWE uh, as one half of the tag team champions. And of course his son, one of the most literally seriously, the most electrifying man in all of entertainment. I mean, the rock, uh, one of the, one of the most iconic figures in pop culture. And it's amazing how well he's done. And the fact that Rocky Johnson uh, literally paved the way for the, for his son and just like your dad, along with Rocky, paved the way for you to become the star that you are. It's it's so cool, so fascinating. Another part of is fascinating to me is like if anybody knows Rocky Johnson's history as far as training goes, um, I'm one of the very few Samoans that Rocky trained. Like that that wasn't Samoan. So mm. being able to like have that on my background and how much that he emphasized on the entertainment aspect, as you just said. Anybody who watches my film or my work, whether I'm a good guy or a bad guy, um, I stress the entertainment aspect of it, like, very, very hardcore. So, like, in my matches, you'll see, like, I'm all about the entertainment. I'm all about giving the value to your dollar because, like, without the fans, you know, like, like they're the ones that pay to, like, see it. They're the ones that, like, keep us alive or the reason why we get to do what we do and exactly, that's why yeah times you know like putting a red light in my face cut this promo this is a this is the angle that i want like you know 
he just sat there over and over. I don't know how many times I had to sit there in that barn for hours at a time and like, you know, go over and rehearse, go over and rehearse, you know? And that's one thing that I bring to the ring that I'm very like confident and proud of is my entertainment aspect in this business. Definitely a key factor in, in making a perfect, what makes a professional wrestling star is that entertainment factor because you want the crowd involvement. You want the participation uh, it was definitely hard during the pandemic because you didn't have live shows, but now since everything's back, you know, to normal, it's important to have that, that, that fan interaction, because if you're booing or cheering, the reaction's what matters and the timing too, you know, the, the pacing and making sure you get what you need to get done in a certain amount of time. It's very, it's very important. The pandemic that you brought up was a really good point because in my career, as you can tell, like 2013, 2014, we're only a few years out from the pandemic happening. So as my career starts to snowball in a good way, year and a half, I'm already doing extra talent for WWE. So like at this point, you know, my first uh, WWE run for extra talent was a two shot for Memphis, uh, Tennessee at the FedEx Forum going straight to Birmingham the next day for SmackDown. So I got my first taste of like what the, the big boys are without being babysat for my old man as a little toddler in the locker room to like seeing it unfold as a group. You were on so, your own. Yeah, yeah, and, and like all, all in all aspects. So, you know, being able to see Michael Hayes for like for the first time like as an adult without my old man and like being able to like, walk up and like conversate with him for the first time since I was little. That was a, a very fun, unique experience. Unfortunately, my, my old man carried a reputation back in the day because of Randy Savage, like, you know, instilled in him and his training. It doesn't, you don't ever let nobody punk you out in a locker room and, and to your face. Like if they say it behind your back, that's one thing. Don't ever let nobody do this to you in front of your face or you settle it like a man. Well, my old man grabbed onto that and got into so many fights in his day that he kind of had that reputation as like, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's going to like finish it or you're going to get into it. So that honestly like carried over and projected into my career. So like first day at raw as an extra talent and then I'm talking to, to Michael Hayes and he brings up the incident where my old man beat up the, uh, a heavyweight champion at the sportatorium at that time, which was Devon Eric. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he's, laughing about it and then like yeah. you know shared a couple of stories about gino hernandez and my old man getting into it and i'm like oh my god he's gonna sit here and think that i'm just this like bad kid that just wants to just start smack with everybody and i'm just like no but the old guys man in old school formality they uh they, they keep it real like they uh they, they they got some some moments where they might scare you but uh at the end of the day man you treat them with respect and that's what it's all about yeah, absolutely. Were you nervous at all doing that extra work, going to shows? Because, I mean, that WWE, I mean, that's that's the big time. So as far as nerves go, um, I'm one of those guys, man, that excel. So, like, when you put me in the heat of the moment, I'm going to be – I'm going to be nervous. I'm going to hit all – I'm going to hit all the points for you. And then it's like as soon as, like, you leave the curtain, it's like, you know, game on. It, it's, it's It's time to do work. So, like – Putting me in the situations where I have to either sink or swim, I feel like makes me very, very more capable and a hell of a lot more stronger of an athlete because I like to be like, you know, on the heater and at all times. I'm a leader. I've never been a follower in my life. So like the first time I, I did the extra talent, I actually got used. So like it wasn't like a lot of the guys where you just go there, you catch a payday, you eat some catering, watch the show, move on to the next one. So, like, they actually put me in Raw on Memphis at the round table in the back with the Singh brothers getting thrown by Braun Strowman. And uh, it's on live TV where you see me holding the Singh brother over there off the table. And, like, Braun Strowman is just staring me down in my, like, white, black, long sleeve. And it's like, okay, here's the first, like, change of reality for me. I got, I got TV time. I got to see what it was about. I got to see how they produced the show. And, uh... From that point, it was like, okay, this ain't bad, but I, I haven't got into the ring yet. So we go over to SmackDown in Birmingham, Alabama, and one of the 
one of the most like I guess you could say embarrassing, but it was kind of funny. It's like and, and like enjoyable, but you know I guess you could see it embarrassing. Was doing the Congo line for uh, No Way Jose. Oh yeah, that, that was my second job. So here I am. That they, they they bring us over to here to this little platform that has all these gimmicks on the table, all these goofy things to wear, and they're like, you know, just go out there, have fun, and and just be silly with it. So like, I got this like ridiculous outfit on, and I'm going into the Congo line, like ah, no way, Jose, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was when the nerves kicked, man. Like for like the WWE stuff, because it was like going out there in front of like sixteen thousand people strong. It was like okay, these reactions, you know, like, you're, you're sharing it with him. Because, like, when he comes out to his, you know, he's going to get the ovation that he he's earned and deserved for the promotion at that time. So, like, you, you, me, anybody else, like, when you watch it from TV, and from that aspect, you're like, okay, he's not getting huge pops. But when you're there live and, like, coming out and, like, you hear the pops, and then it's like, oh, da-da-da-da-da-da-da, you got to hit all the marks because mm-hmm. – that point you know you can't step out of line and then there was like this little ordeal where the congo line gets involved and the guy comes over the top takes a dive you catch him you fall over da 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 right. so i like, all that part no problem it was when i did a saturday night main event and i worked him for the very first time to like put him over that that right there was the uh was the pivotal point as far as like getting my taste of thousands of people on tv live don't miss a step make put this guy over make sure he looks good follow your directions like you want to be used again you want to keep on coming keep on coming keep on coming so that right there walking through the walking through the curtain was the the true butterflies because i got it in the congo line but it wasn't nothing like walking down there getting ready to actually do something physical with somebody that's like Mm -hmm. been on and has established their name so like getting in there to like do that was kind of mesmerizing walking to the ring but when the bell rings man it's like all business and you forget like all the the nerves and the butterflies and like you just dial in on what you're truly there for exactly so it's experience it's experience and so you had a taste of that mainstream big time television and you're not you know you're working in front of a hundred thousand people and you know the sky's the limit for you. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? In the next five years, I, I definitely see myself going and doing like big indie promotions and definitely going to put my foot in the door for one of these uh, TV programs. Cause like now the COVID slowed me down because when I was doing all of this extra talent work for them, you know, like years are going by, you know what I'm saying? COVID hits. They're not using extra talent no more. You've seen the way they did it. They just put it in the performance center and they ran mm-hmm. the tele- and all that. That put me out of the job. Like I went, I went from indie circuit my first year and a half to where I was collecting paychecks where I was doing this full time. You know, like when you have over 12 extra talent appearances for WWE, you know, I got used in, in like quite a handful of them. But you know, there you know, there's there's gonna be more misses than hits as far as the extra talent department goes. Mm-hmm. They're still nice, like as you're going through all of this. So, you know, I'm I'm stacking and saving, stacking and saving. And then just like that, pandemic hits, boom, it's just like, okay, well, now my high paying job's gone. So like now I go dabble into security, I go end up working for that and then doing like, you know, like independent shows on the weekends when I can. I'm flying through the ranks in security. I go from a gate officer all the way up to a captain. Um, started getting paid nice in it. Um, was doing, uh, was actually doing, uh, like, what would you call it, benefits or charity work? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going to uh, what's a, a, a famous hospital up here where I'm at is Sacred Heart Hospital. I was going in there when I was running around as, like, you know, like, independent champion for, like, certain promotions uh xw 2000 at the time i'll name drop that one um when i was xw 2000 heavyweight champion i was going up to sacred heart with the belt dressed in my little gimmick um my youtube channel has like a lot of it on there and interacting with like the sick children who doesn't who didn't get to have the life that like me or you get to grow up to adore and and enjoy and um just it, it touches my heart being able to perform not only in an entertainment aspect but like being able to put smiles on children's faces or that grown ass man sitting over there that his wife drug him to the show because he doesn't want no part of it and getting him to crack a smile for the first time. That's what it's about for me is like 
getting the reactions and like having them people like come up to me after the show and like give me my my props and like hey you were great da, da, da. you should be here you should be there it's it's not where i should be it's that i execute my job professionally enough for you to enjoy it because it doesn't matter if i have a hundred thousand people or one person if i make you enjoy the craft the, the sport my work like that that's what i'm in it for like the money's great and i and trust me i i'm hungry i'd love to make a living doing it full time but uh you know like curveballs in this business get thrown at you and i'm gonna be me regardless and nobody will ever understand the way Jaden steel's mind works because you'll see me on camera as one guy and then outside of the ring i'm a whole different person yeah yeah was there a particular moment at the hospital that just touched your heart whenever you were visiting a patient? Now, <clears throat> all of the patients that I visited, I probably have a few hundred uh, sick kids underneath my belt as far as doing the, the charity work over there for Sacred Heart. But his name was Connor. Um, he was only about, I would say, six or seven. Uh, he didn't have very, very long. And what's sad about it is, you know, like when you're going in here and like you're talking to some of these kids, some of the nurses and all that, they'll give you the backstory on them and all of that. And uh, I just, I didn't get a backstory to this kid when I walked in there and and his family was there. And, you know, here they are, like, me doing this work. You know, the the nurse asked them, would they like a professional wrestler to come in and talk to their son? You know, they don't know. They didn't even know I was coming, man. Mm -hmm. They, but they, you know, they said yes. And I walk in there. So, like, you can already tell, like, you know, it's a, it's probably awkward or uncomfortable for everybody at that point because nobody's touched ground with each, each other yet. And sitting down for, like, those 30 minutes and, like, talking to him and his family, getting to know them, and then uh, putting smiles on his face, and then, like, even his family got, like, really comfortable with me. And, like, we just started talking, like, you know, we never skipped a beat. Like, we knew each other for a while. And then after having like a, a great 30 minutes with their son and like having him like play with the title, smiling and just talking about his favorite wrestlers and just, you know, like how kids do, like they melt your heart. Um, his, uh, his mom was out there in the hallway when I was walking out and she stopped me and she was like, I just wanted to thank you because nobody has ever came up here and took the time out of their day to come see my son and just interact and, and invest time with him like the way that you have. And she gave me an embracing hug. And it was like, you know, I almost want to like go into tears at this point, you know? And so I'm holding them back. It's like, we're having a heartfelt moment, you know? Mm -hmm. Breaks it down with like how long that he has. And unfortunately he didn't have very much more time. So I only got to see him probably two more times after that. And unfortunately he passed away. And uh, I always carry like Connor in my heart and I always think about him. And then the irony of it is like, Years later, I go wrestle in the Dothan, Alabama area, and I meet another little kid named Connor that becomes like a huge Jaden Steele fan. And it's like, I don't know the word Connor just follows me, but like I, <laughs> three of my biggest supporters come with the name Connor, and like you know, like I always hold it right here, man, because it's dear to me. But that name just it, it's it's special to me. Oh man, that's just that's just very touching, you know, the fact that you're able to do that for someone else. Uh what why do you feel passionate about helping out in your community? I just feel like the giving a gift of professional wrestling and like this this is going to be an answer that's going to be answered differently from everybody that you ask other, outside of me. My legacy is very important to me. My uh my family crest is very important to me. And everything that Rocky Johnson and my old man have taught me throughout my training years, and even even to this day, me asking my old man about stuff, it was that was one of the focal points that they like throw in there to do. And it's I got the gift of professional wrestling. Nobody else can provide that for me. That's the most passionate thing in this world that I'm passionate about. So getting this gift given to me, what can I do to give back to my community to thank them for the opportunities that they give me to perform and be able to get to do what I love to do? And rather it was going to these mom and pop businesses, cutting a promo for them, just showing up my face and just being like, yo, Jaden Steele's here. Da, 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 da. These are some good people. Or just going to hospitals and visiting sick kids just to make sure like, you know, like if they can have one shitty day then I want to be that one that gives them that great positive day, you know, like a great positive will outweigh a lot of negatives and just 
putting in all of that work and just being around that environment, it, it it's who I am. Like, it's what I love to do. So like, you know, I, I'm not going to go to the parties. I'm not going to go to the clubs. I'd rather go to that hospital and make that kid's day. I'd rather, you know, interact with him and figure out why do you love wrestling? Like, what? why are you attached to this? Like, what makes you fall in love with this? What What are you passionate about? And just sharing the the love and passion of wrestling with each other. That's that's what it's about, man, from generation to generation. Jaden, I want to say thank you very much for coming on here. It means a lot to me and to the listeners and viewers that are watching this on YouTube. Where can people find more about you on social media? Do you have anything you want to promote? Yeah, yeah, man. Um, I got forced to do the Instagram, so like it, it's a little bit low because like I got I got rid of that a long time ago. But um, <laughs> TikTok, it's heel flippy H E E L F L I P P Y. Uh, Facebook, you can catch my business page at Real Deal Jaden Steele, J A Y D E N Steele with an extra E, or Jay Williams on Facebook if you want to catch the, the the private profile. But like you know, like I said, it's private, so don't don't shoot the messenger if I don't accept it. Um, my Instagram is Real Jaden Steele. The YouTube is Jaden Steele. So if you all want to catch any of these moments from my my first ride along to WWE or catching my first clip in WWE or even some of the interactions that I've had at Sacred Heart Hospital with some of these guys, it's all on there, man. Awesome. Well, Jaden, thanks again, and you're more than welcome to come back. Yeah, man, you got to get me on here so we can talk a little bit more about the career at some point, you know? Definitely. <laughs> we'll make it happen. Thanks again. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you for having me. All right, take care. This is Wrestling With Heart. I hope you found this podcast to be informative and entertaining. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and look out for the next edition.